Greetings, and welcome to part 2 of the Source Filmmaker tutorial series. Today, I will teach you how to edit model file paths, load models and particles, pose models and add cosmetics, require up to date Team Fortress 2 models and particles, camera settings, and lastly render settings. Before we begin, I suggest you check out part 1 where I explained how to install, configure, and operate Source Filmmaker. And if you're still watching, that means you're currently enjoying this, so please consider subscribing. It's free- Hey, you said that in the last video. Alright, right, let's change it up. Ah, greetings chat. It would have been a great interest for you to right click the subscription button to indulge yourself in my work and allow for my excellence to get 1,500 followers before the 7th month of the year. Someone please remind me to never, ever do that again. But without further ado, let's begin. Let's begin with a tip. Before even loading a single model, remember back in part 1 I mentioned how the SDK launch window has an option to edit file paths? If you click said button, you'll see a screen like this. As you can see, Team Fortress 2 and Half-Life 2 are already selected and cannot be deselected, as it is necessary for Source Filmmaker to run. If you select any of the other ticked boxes, you can load models from the respective games, such as Portal or Left 4 Dead. Let's head back into Source Filmmaker. Last time I got you to make a session named SFM Guide. Today we're creating a new session named SFM Guide Models. We will use the same map as last time, that being Stage Rock BSP. Once it's loaded, head to the Animation Set Editor and click this button. Then select Create Animation Set for New Model. Now, you should see a list of models from Half-Life 2 and Team Fortress 2. Let's use the Heavy as our first model. There are two Heavy models within Source Filmmaker. There is a Player model and an HWM model. HWM stands for Hardware Morph. The key difference between the two is Hardware Morph is more high quality and has a larger facial range compared to the player models. However, a downside of the HWM is that cosmetics won't work properly, like this. So let's quickly pose the heavy. You may want to use whatever pose you would like, but I'm going to use this pose on screen now. And before any of you art nerds say otherwise, it is perfectly fine to use a ref pose. Once you've got your desired pose, go into the motion editor and hold the control key. You should now see the model's bones. Click the point you would wish to adjust and let go of control. You should see a yellow ring like this. Move down here and select the move tool to move the heavy along the X, Y and Z axis. Now that the heavy is not halfway in the ground, we can now begin posing them. You could use this tool to rotate joints. Now you can properly begin to pose. quick bit of advice for finger posing. Select these three bones of a single finger. Then right click the rotation tool and hover over the rotation mode and click local. Now when you bend the heavy's fingers they will all curl into each other. Now that you've done the pose, let's add some cosmetics to your heavy. Right click the heavy in the animation set editor and select add Team Fortress 2 cosmetic. There you can type in the name of the cosmetic you are looking for. However, not all the new cosmetics are within the files. This means you can head on over to the Source Filmmaker Workshop and download a cosmetic pack. Or you may want to manually update Source Filmmaker. Now, this may seem a bit misleading. But to save on time with this video, I'm going to put the link in the description to a video guide as well as a Steam discussion page about manually updating Source Filmmaker, as it is a complex and time consuming process that I can't cover in this video. If you are using the Team Fortress 2 cosmetic window and you have found the cosmetic you want, simply click OK and there you go. 
Alternatively, if you are using a model that's not on the cosmetic window, simply add the model to the scene and open up the model's bones until you see a bone like BIP underscore head or BIP underscore hand L. To attach the model to the character, drag the bones of the character model to the bones of the cosmetic model. An example would be the BIP underscore head of a scout model being dragged into the BIP head bone of a scout hat cosmetic. Once you've added all the bones to the corresponding model, simply select the bones and head up to the procedural tab and drag the zero procedure to full. You should see that the model should slowly end up clipping onto the character. If you are confused, feel free to comment down below. Now let's say we want to have an unusual hat. Before we create a particle, click Windows and Particle Editor tool. This window allows you to look at and edit particles within the game or workshop add-ons. For now, go to File, Open and then navigate to TF forward slash particles and then select item underscore fx dot pcf. For the sake of this demonstration, scroll down until you find super rare underscore beams one. If you want to find another unusual effect, keep scrolling until you find one. Now, remember the name of the particle that you want to use. Click tools, then switch to SFM. Then go to the animation set editor and click create a particle system. It is just the same process as creating a model. Then head into the TF2 particle folder and select item underscore fx.pcf again. And then select the particle you want in the particle definition section. Note that you can also extend the time of which the particle is around for as well as its start time. Once it's loaded in, you won't see it until you change scene or drag your time selection bar off the session and back in. Hopefully, it should be at zero seconds, unless you have changed it. And now you should see a particle system. To attach the particle system to the hat, simply drag the BIP underscore head of the cosmetic onto control zero of the particle and drag the zero procedural to full. Then move the time bar around and you should see that the particle system is now attached to the model. Now let's render this bad boy. Right click the screen and click render settings. Here you can change how it renders. Currently it's set to be grainy and horrible. So let's change that. By clicking these arrows, you can change the sample rate of the progressive refinement. Basically, the higher the sample, the more higher the quality. However, the higher the quality, the longer the render times are, which is normally fine for images. But in animations, you would be waiting 3 hours for like a 5 second video to render, so keep that in mind. For me personally, I like to choose 128 and 128 for my animation renders and 1024 and 256 for my poster renders. Once that is done and you are happy with how your work is, go to File, Export, then Poster and then put it into the desired folder. Note you could also change the format of which it is. I like to keep mine as PNGs. And with that, you have successfully created your first Source Filmmaker poster. Of course, you could use different maps, characters, particles, cosmetic poses. At the end of the day, it's your SFM project. I'm just simply giving you the ropes and how to use them. So feel free to comment any questions regarding Source Filmmaker or how I can improve these tutorials. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.